Joining me now is Dr. Devi Nampia Parampil from the NYU School of Medicine. Thank you for joining us this morning. Oh, thanks. So we just heard that Tomic Eric Duncan's family is now clear. What do you think this will do to ease people's fear? Well, I think it'll help people in terms of the mixed messages. I mean, we see people wearing these hazmat suits talking about having no skin showing, and it creates a lot of alarm because most people, you know, who are traveling on flights, they don't have all this gear. So again, they're very low risk, and the risk of catching Ebola is very low. It's through bodily fluids, but especially for these folks who were in close contact with Duncan when he first started showing symptoms and stuff. The fact that they haven't developed any symptoms is actually very reassuring. And I think the difference, the reason there's a difference, is because when you first start showing symptoms, or even if you have some, you might not have that much virus in your bodily fluids yet. So even if other people potentially get exposed or it's on surfaces, they might not catch it, as opposed to in the later stages, you know, where the nurses were taking care of him and there might be a lot more virus in those fluids. What do you make of this Pentagon strike team. Is, does it strike you as odd, no pun intended, that it's not the CDC? Well, you know, who's organizing it? It does strike me as a little bit odd, but I think it's the right move. I think we should have done this from the beginning to have a team that really is trained to treat Ebola and to manage Ebola and going directly to the places where we might have patients. In fact, I actually think that they should do this in the home as opposed to the hospital, because why risk somebody coming into the hospital, waiting in the ER, you know, and exposing people, whether it's police, firefighters, you know, paramedics to uh, Ebola potentially. Why not have someone, if they're coming from West Africa, if they're at potentially high risk, why not have them call a number where someone can go to their home and check them out and see if they might have Ebola? And you mentioned travel. Let's talk about that. There's a lot of debate, as we just heard from Tracy Potts, about yes. whether to uh, ban travel, whether we should uh, revoke visas. What's your take on all of that? I mean, I think that should be looked at every single day. You know, it's a continuous question, and I think we need more information to really make the best decision. I mean, there's a compelling argument. Of course, we want to decrease people's fears. We don't want Ebola to get a hold in this country. But at the same time, you know, if we cut off travel, there's two problems. We might not be able to get humanitarian aid over there, and we might not actually be able to stop the spread of Ebola. If people go to other countries, you know, they can spread it to other countries and bring it here. But the data we need, I think we need to know why are people coming here, and why are people going to West Africa? Is it really for humanitarian humanitarian aid? What's the purpose? You know, are people really just kind of, okay. it's a tourism or something else? All right, doctor. Thank you very oh, much. Thank Have a you. great day. Thanks for having me.